What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy in the overall market. And break down what's going on with the economic calendar and another piece of news to cause the market to dip. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. And deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75. The offer ends in just three weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about the markets. Looking at Tesla, we do have a head and shoulders like structure starting to develop. And there's a little bit of weakness building on the chart. We had some negative news that I talked about in my second to last video. If you want more news on Tesla, just look at my second to last video about the general manager that was leaving Tesla, not to mention some news about Geico. Uh, Geico, once again, uh, has a different views of the Cybertruck not meeting their guidelines, so not going to be covering that. So that's very, very important. Uh, but there's even more news that's coming out that's affecting the market as a whole. So the Fed Speaker Kashkari has come out, and he said that the U.S. economy is still very resilient, but something very important is worth noting the fact that the balance of risks are tilting towards higher unemployment, and that's something the market didn't really like. So once again, the market does not want to see that happen. It's still betting on the soft landing, but he's saying that we could be looking for higher unemployment, despite the resilience the economy has been telling us about. So I think it's very important with this going on, uh, you know, with a lot of fear that's kind of building the market's dipping a little bit more and that's dragging Tesla down as well. So it's not just Tesla dipping, the whole market is slowing down. Uh, Tesla has resistance to watch for at 244. If we can't reclaim that, we have this gap down here that's getting filled around this 240 area. And then the main support's at 238. We have to hold 230, <laughs> excuse me, 238. If not, we are at risk of coming down towards this next gap, very close to the 230 area. So there could be a bigger drop if Tesla loses 238. That's our main support so far. Now, if anything, I think Tesla could attempt to base between 238 and 240. So we'll see if that holds. So look at that as a very, very critical support. Then we'll see how things end up progressing from there. For ES, we are rejecting as well, but I do want to mention that ES has that head and shoulders like structure. There's like a left shoulder here, there's a head up here, and then maybe a right shoulder that could be forming. If we lose structure, we're very close to doing that. 5730, if that fails us, this thing is going to be easily coming down to about the 5600s for a rug pull, so be careful with that. We need to reclaim 5768 to turn back up. We started off consolidating only to reject after Cash Kari's speech. So this could lead to more downside, guys. So be careful. The chart's showing some weakness. And there's a possible head and shoulders that's developing right now. On SPY, we also happen to have a head and shoulders-like structure. Uh, it's been developing. We were not able to hold above 570. We were trying to do that for like the first two to three hours of the day, only to start declining for the last couple of minutes. So we're looking at our main support at 565. If we don't hold that, this thing is going to decline all the way down easily to about 561. And then, you know, we have that gap to still fill. So it, there's a good chance we do decline all the way down there. And then if that does not hold, we have our 200 EMA at 557. That's likely coming. So there is a risk of this dumping even more, guys. So be very, very careful. Uh, be very mindful of the fact that there is uh, not only risk, but we'll have to see if we could hold 565 or not. Otherwise, there's going to be a bigger dump. NVIDIA pumped all the way up to our target of 130. It hit the 130s and then starts to decline a bit with the overall market. So we're looking at this support to watch for around 127.8. If that fails us, we're looking for basically 125. If this holds, we could attempt to rebound, but there is going to be a risk of some downside. So be very mindful of this. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin stuck in the middle. We have 64,000 as resistance and then 62,600 as our support. If that fails us, we're looking for 61,800. So we're kind of stuck within the middle ground of all these different levels. But in my personal opinion, I think we're just kind of consolidating. So we have to give this a little bit more time, uh, at least as time goes on. As far as NQ goes, this is kind of rejecting right over here. Um, we have resistance around 20,070, and we have this main support to watch for around this 19,800 area. So we could continue to decline as well. So this is forming kind of like an inverse cup and handle like structure, and it's starting to struggle. So it had to hold 20,070. I was talking about that in my earlier video. At first, it was doing a great job at holding it, but then it starts to decline. So with us not holding that, that, that's leading to the risk of us coming down lower into the 19,700s of 20,000 breaks. Uh, looking at the QQQ, we're barely at support at 482. If it does not hold us, we still have this big gap to fill around 475. We could be on our way down there if this rejects. So if we don't hold 482, we're at risk of more downside. Apple got a big rejection since we got some bad news. Apple also had some bad news about how Goldman Sachs, uh, they said that uh, once again, uh, Apple is known for doing really, really well. But there was another analyst that came out that cut their price target on Apple and said it's going to likely decline. That's part of why Apple is dipping. We have the IWM, which is showing weakness. 
We failed to hold 218, so we're going down to 216, which is what our target was. We have the Coinbase also dipping. It could be dipping closer to this gap down here, all the way down to 165 and 163. Amazon's barely at 180. If it fails, so we're looking for 178. Meta's declining all the way down to 585, failing to hold above 600. So that was a liquidity grab. We're looking for 582 as our support. If that does not hold, we could be looking for a bigger decline. So it's going to be approaching 582. Microsoft hit our target of about the 409 area since 414 failed us. If that does not hold, we're going to continue to decline all the way down to the lower 400. So there's still risk of downside for that. Google's looking pretty weak right now. We have a gap to fill as well. If we don't hold 165.29, we're at risk of dumping even more. So Tesla and the market are turning a little bit more bearish. There is a risk of more downside. This could be a sign that the market is about to see a rejection. So be very open-minded for that over the next couple of days. Uh, this could drag Tesla a little bit lower. So it is possible Tesla declines a little bit more now. It's a little bit of a change of plans. But that's okay because once we get closer to the RoboTaxi event, that could change everything. That could be a game changer for Tesla. This could still balance very nicely. So we'll see how that event ends up going. But for now, Tesla is bearish because of external catalyst and the broader markets. With that being said, I thank you all so much for listening. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about is the VIX before I conclude the video. I want to just mention the VIX is on a breakout right now. So it managed to just gap up and continue to go. And I want to call out that we already filled this gap up here. So it's pretty crazy. We'll see if the VIX continues to climb. When you look at the way the VIX is looking, it's bullish right now. If we break structure around 24, um, we have another gap to fill over here around the 36s. So the VIX could see a breakout soon, a, a breakout kind of like this if the market is about to get a sharp decline. And we still have that gap to fill around 36. So I think we will be on our way up there soon. My view of the market was that, yes, the market could have pumped a bit. But then as we get closer to the election, we're anticipating a decline especially by the second half of October. So far, the market is still showing those signs of declines. I wasn't able to pump as much as I was hoping for before the decline started today. So there's still a risk of more declines. As far as Tesla goes, now it's also at risk of declining with the broader markets for the time being. Uh, this could just be another dip buying opportunity, though, because with the RoboTaxi event, things could completely shift for Tesla, depending on what Tesla ends up announcing. So we'll have to see what ends up happening. I think a lot of Tesla's price action and where Tesla goes hinges upon that and earnings. So we'll have to be very patient. We'll give Tesla the time it needs and just know that it's not the end of the world for Tesla. In just three days, we have the RoboTaxi event. We could decline a bit approaching it, but then once we get very close to it, I do anticipate there's going to be a lot of upside coming, especially on Wednesday slash Thursday. And then whether or not we continue to pump or dump depends on what ends up being announced during the event. All right, so that's my view for Tesla for now. As of right now, we look a little bit more bearish alongside the broader markets. So be very patient and we'll give this the time it needs. I'll see you guys again in a couple of hours for another update. Until then, have a great day and peace out.